you just take a country like Rwanda, which a lot of people know. I remember um, when I learned that the entire GDP, the entire global economy of Rwanda, this is a country with millions and millions of people, yeah, was less than New York City's public school budget. So I think the scale sometimes, so New York City has more money to run the New York City public schools than the country of Rwanda, the nation of Rwanda. Now Rwanda Unreal. has to take that limited amount of money yeah. and build roads and build clinics and build power plants and the tax revenue. So people are like, well, why does it have so little money? Well, 90, 90 some percent of the country are subsistence farmers. They're not paying taxes like you and I. Yeah. That revenue, they're, they're, they're farming a small plot of land next to their home. They're walking for water, you know, from an open source. So the government of Rwanda is investing in water infrastructure. It's just doesn't have the resources to solve the problem uh, fast enough. And that's why, you know, Charity Water has now gotten, you know, a couple million people around the world engaged in helping accelerate this problem being solved and helping move us closer to a day where everybody has clean water to drink. One time I heard the story of some village in Africa where people came in and they're like, we're going to build you wells and they built wells, but like they didn't really do it locally. And I guess it hurt people. I probably told that story. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was you. Maybe I heard you. Maybe. It, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, the, look, like, the how old does charity way, water? Yeah. What's the old way and what's the new way? The the old way. And, and I think the sector has, has vastly improved. You know, again, I've been doing this almost two decades. Um, in the beginning, I remember people from, you know, let's say the Midwest or from Texas who knew how to drill oil wells and they would fly over to Africa and they would drill some water wells and then they would leave. You're right. When that well breaks, the people in that village are saying, oh, those nice white people from Texas, you know, probably are going to come back and fix their well that they drilled. So, uh, you know, from the very first day of Charity Water, one of the principal pillars was we would always exclusively work with local partners in these countries. We believe that for the work to be culturally appropriate, for it to be sustainable, it had to be led by Ethiopians in Ethiopia, yeah. Malawians in Malawi, you know, Hondurans in Honduras. So today, you know, we employ over 2,000 local employees. So today, over 2,000 people across 21 countries are taking the money that Charity Water is raising through this very generous community and they are turning it into clean water by drilling and by building rainwater harvesting systems and biosyn filters and gravity fed systems. We've got about 10 technologies now across the portfolio, but you wouldn't see anybody that looks like me across any of our country projects. And that's, that's actually really cool. I mean, we're also creating cool. local jobs. These people, these well drillers are providing for their families and their jobs mean that other people get access to clean water. So they're heroes. They're seen as heroes by their local communities. I love that. I love that so much. We kind of get to sit in the background. Uh, when I take donors over there, I mean, there's nothing for us to do. You know, my donors aren't, don't have jackhammers. You know, they're not drilling. Uh, they're just learning. And they're really in awe of the commitment and the dedication. I'll just give one example. Uh, in Ethiopia, we have a bunch of drilling rigs and a, a drilling rig costs about a million dollars for the rig and the compressors and the trucks. And it can drill 90 wells a year. The teams there, about 10 people or so working on a drilling team. So you've got your hydrogeologists and your technicians and the, you know, all the people who are making it happen. Uh, it takes about three days. So you can drill a well in three days. They will work 29 out of 30 days a month during the eight month dry season. So there's four months where it rains, uh, it's just too muddy to move the rig around. So they take one day off a month. That's how committed they are because if they took eight days off a month, they would drill less wells and they would help less people. So people come with us and we come back. We're like, we're not working hard enough. Yeah. You know, we're inspired by our local partners who make us want to be better and make us want to to work harder and more passionately. So what's the cost? Like if we're talking about one well- About drilling, 10 Gs, about $10,000 can build a water project. And that's um, like, that's the cost of the equipment. That's the cost of the people, the, the manpower. The training is really important, the sustainability. Okay. Um, we're, we've got sensors on some projects. We've got mechanics teams who will take care of the aftercare. Because uh, you know, if a well breaks, we want to make sure that we have a mechanism in place to go and repair that and to go and make sure that that 
clean water keeps flowing for many years to come. So it's about $10,000 uh, for a solution. And, and we have a lot of people do that. We have a lot of small businesses that call up and say, you know, I've got 10 grand. Where's an area of greatest need? People can yeah. pick the country. Sometimes somebody will oh, donate. Cool. Sometimes people will adopt a kid um, from Cambodia or okay. from Malawi and say, or Uganda. Like, I want to build a well in Uganda because I adopted from there. Um, so there's this, there's an element of choice as well. And you've mentioned, too, something about ending the the, yes. the crisis. Like, is that actually going to be something that happens? I freaking hope so. Because, it's completely solvable. Well, I don't know. I just I was watching your documentary, and, and you talked about, yeah, the moon landing, and then, like, you know, getting, yeah, man on the moon for the first time, how that was, like, this global victory. Like, will that be something that we see in our lifetime when it's, like, everyone in the world has clean water? Like, do you think that's something that we can solve in the next 50 years. We started out at 1.1 billion people without water on a 6 billion world population. Now we're down to 700 million people without water on a almost 8 billion population. So we've made a lot of progress. I looked at data recently that said if all of the funding stays kind of the same. Charity Water raises the same and all the other great water orgs out there are raising the same and the governments are doing about the same. It would be 2060 when the problem is solved. So 36 years from now. Wait, that's actually really exciting. Yeah, well, I'm 80, so I don't wanna be 80 <laughs> when I see this done. Well, uh, I just like- But, in, but it, it, yeah. it is possible. So what we're trying to do is massively change that trajectory okay. because the UN goal is 2030. Oh, the, U, the UN has a goal of getting clean oh, water. five and a half years from now, we're supposed to have everybody on Earth clean water. Has the UN planned to do that before and it didn't work? The UN comes up with all these global goals for, you know, the very, very aspirational goals against hunger and, you know, a bunch of different poverty metrics. So water is goal six at the UN. So, so in other words, the, 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 the Millennium Development Goals, which are now called the Global Goals, they rebranded it. So all that to say, we're 30 years behind. Okay. <laughs> but it's possible. And there is an end point. We're just not going fast enough. So there are people that will, there are tens of millions of people that will die because we are not going fast enough. 